hesitation. And in fact, if I might add, that whole evening from the time they came into our house to the time they left, there was never one ounce of remorse, even the fact that they left me tied in a chair and I could have easily bled to death. And there was no consideration for that. And I guess if you could say if there was any consideration given is that I was going to be allowed to bleed to death instead of him shooting me in the head, he being Mr. Ford. When was that the exact question that you asked? Why did you shoot me? Yes. When you said, why did you? Were you, were you directing that at the person who had shot you? In other words, I was just, they were both there. I mean, I was shot. Why did you shoot me? And, and I might say Mr. Sanglin was the closest one to me. <clears throat> I think you testified yesterday, yesterday that Mr. Whittle um, appeared to be a follower, he didn't say anything, and appeared to just be taking orders. Um, who, who was giving the orders? I think it was just a general feeling. I mean, it was he was being directed to go get a chair, uh, tie my wife up. He was the one who was being directed to get the get let me get those dogs out of here. And so, and, and I and I don't remember which one of, who was doing the directing. That's not the answer. The best your recollection was the person who was directing Marty Swarm, Doug Stanley, or both. They were, they were both. I mean, it was. I, I but I couldn't recall which one asked told me to do what. You also testified that you were scared, that you were afraid after this whole invasion, that you became concerned because you realized that there was another person involved, and you referenced them as Billy Barker, and also the Hells Angels motorcycle club. And I think you testified that you didn't know at that time whether it was a legitimate uh, chapter or outfit of that club or not. So I just want to go over what your reaction was to that fear, to that concern. And I think you testified that your reaction, sir, was to leave the area for a while and to cooperate with law enforcement and try to seek some safety through them, correct? That's correct. We, we rented a townhouse in Kansas City and uh, really kind of kept them quiet of where we were at and, uh, and just kept in contact with uh, law enforcement during that process. Seems like a reasonable approach then. Oh, uh, one last area. Morrison asked you about the financial deal between Jeff Muller and Roy Slates and whether Roy had lost money and I think he testified that you're not sure how much money he lost, but he did lose one. Yes. Did Roy Slates ever indicate to you that he felt scammed or cheated or anything like that? I never talked to Roy about it. He never approached me, and I was busy doing my business, and I never approached him. I hadn't talked to Roy. Actually, I haven't talked to Roy Slates uh, probably since 1999 or 98. And he never indicated whether he filed a lawsuit or anything like that, a civil suit to try to get into Not tonight, he did. And I know you're not a lawyer, sir, but if you feel cheated or scammed, you understand that you have a venue right here in the courtroom just like this where you can file a civil lawsuit. Right. Check to the nature of the question, Judge. I'll, I'll withdraw it. All right. I have nothing else. Mr. Scammell, um, <clears throat> Mr. Mueller was just asking you some questions. You said that uh, uh, Mr. Stanglin appeared to have the most sense and reasoning. You recall saying that? Yes. And that would have been comparing him to the other two individuals who were there, correct? Correct. And um, I assume that you therefore were having some conversations with him uh, about um, his mission, so to speak, in being there, correct? Uh, just to clarify, there was a conversation going on but it was again, there were two individuals standing there, and I could hear the second hand ticking on the wall. And and my goal was to make sure that there was conversation going on. I was counting those seconds as they ticked off the clock. 
and I, would, I didn't want it to go past 10 seconds before there was some more dialogue taking place. So that dialogue was a kind of a constant, continuing exchange back and forth for, for 10 or 15 minutes. And, 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 and I honestly can't tell you which, it, it wasn't directed at any one individual, but it seemed like Mr. Steinlin had more of the answers than the other, I do recall that. I asked you if you knew whether or not um, Mr. Swarns had paid money to um, Mr. Muller, uh, the New Jersey broker, uh, with regard to his attempt to get financing. I believe you answered yes. You were aware that. You said that again. You said Mr. Swarns did what? Mr. Swarns had paid some money to the money broker, Mr. Muller in New Jersey. I'm not. I'm not aware of that. Um, when you introduced people to Mr. Muller, uh, was there an expectation on your part that you would be financially compensated no. on the introduction? No. Did you ever receive anything as a result of introducing Mr. Swartz to Mr. Muller? I never introduced Mr. Swartz. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Slates. I, mean, I just want to be clear, I, I didn't know Mr. Swartz. Right. I have never even seen him to this day. He'd never come back to the way. I, I was in error, okay, using that name. Mr. Slates is the one that I was referring to. So the question is? Um, did Mr. Um, was there an expectation on your part that through the introduction of Mr. Slates to Mr. Muller that you would receive financial compensation? No, sir. And I assume you never did. No, sir. So, okay. You said in response to a question that was asked of you that you believe that uh, Andrew Waddell may have been a victim Yes. And that was part of your discussions with um, Mr. Ewing from uh, Missouri, from the Vernon County Prosecutor, uh, Prosecutor's Office, right? It was, it was a conference that he called my friend and myself in to, to explain to us why he was going to offer a plea bargain to, to Mr. Whale. And why did you believe that Mr. Whale may have been a victim? I didn't necessarily. Jack, do we approach for a moment? Yeah. 